So in part one, I created this homemade solar panel, and in part two, I compared the homemade solar panel with the dome panel that I purchased, uh, just to see what the differences were and whether it was worth making this other panel. I think it is worth making this panel, although adding both solar heaters together only generates about 25% of the heat actually found in the pool. But it's well worth it, as 25% extra is quite a lot of heat increase. So let's have a look at this uh, panel to see how it's fared up. So this has been sitting here for three months and as you can see the grass has grown a little bit over it. Uh, but the tape's holding up strong even though it's been rained on a number of times. I've added some black bin liners although it's actually slipped down a little bit and this absorbs a little bit more heat uh, to add to the panel. In fact it's so hot I can hardly touch it. The silver foil bubble wraps actually work quite well and held up to the weathering and so is the board. If I just lift it up, although there's a bit of water creep at the bottom of the board, there's nothing much that is degraded on it, which is good. So I've had an Arduino in here measuring 10 temperature sensors and this Arduino is recording everything on an SD card and then transmitting it back to the house so I can see what it is. So this is the information that's coming from that transmitter and I'll just explain what all this is. So as you can see from this display, the pool's sitting at 31.1 degrees C. The outside temperature in the shade is 35.5 degrees C. The dome is currently producing 477 watts of power. Well, that keeps jumping up. And the homemade panel is 521 watts. And that's measured from the flow rate the input temperature and the output temperature of the panel and that's flow rate and input and output temperatures of the dome. This was the best method that was suggested on the comment section in the last two videos and it's quite a good indication of what's going on with the system. This P in the top right corner that is to show me that the pumps are actually running and this flashing symbol here is the heartbeat so I know that every time that shows there's a new data set coming. So it measures 10 temperature sensors, including this one in the box. So it's got that temperature sensor in the box. It measures the sensor of the panel, which is here. In fact, that slipped down as I've moved it. it measures the outside temperature, which is this sensor here. It measures the, if I can find it, the shade temperature, which is that one. Also measures the dome input temperature and the dome output temperature. The pool temperature is sitting there. Uh, the output temperature is sitting inside the pipe. And then the input temperature to the panel is sitting down there. Then you've got a center temperature on the center of the dome underneath. And what it does is measures the temperature of the probe in the center of the panel, if that's higher than the temperature sensor in the pool, then the relays here click in and turn on the main supply to the pumps. So I've got one pump here which is the best way pump, which is 23 watts. And then I've got another pump in here, as you can hear it, which is 24 watts. So we've got a maximum of 50 watts of pumps sitting there, which is actually mains driven. So this panel looks like it's averaging about 600 watts, but I'll actually look at it uh, once I've got the memory stick out of here and see how it's performing. So I unplug the power, take that memory stick out. Right, so let's stick that in the computer. The file produced in the data logger is just a CSV file which is comma separated values and I've got it to write the file in this way so I can easily import it into Excel and then produce graphs from it. Also from Excel I've been able to generate a PDF document that I've put on my website so you can easily look at all the data and the graphs. So to find my website just type dev255 into Google and the top result at the moment will be my website.
and most of the other results as well below it. So if you go into my website, I've got a number of projects that I'm currently working on, including a CNC mill, the solar panel heaters, an electric MGF conversion, and my ongoing Vectra GSI project. So if you click on the solar heater project, it will take you to a easy to follow log of all the steps I've taken in this project, where you can have a look through the pictures, the videos and everything else up to this point. I'll share the program for the Arduino as well for both the transmitter and receiver. So I'll put that on GitHub and put the description in the link below once I've done that. And then you'll be able to see all these items and how to make one for yourself if you wanted to make a data logger. So the best way to see what I use is actually go to the tab at the top called what I bought. And these are affiliate links with Amazon. So most of the items are purchased through Amazon. And if you click on one of these links, they won't cost you any more if you wish to purchase them. Although the projects will benefit from a small percentage of the qualifying purchase, which helps improve the quality of the projects and the video demonstrations. So thank you if you purchase anything through these links. So if I just have a look at the 10 temperature sensors, these were only £20, so £2 each. And I've had these sitting in the pool for well over three months now. So they're fully waterproof and I haven't had one go wrong. So back on the website under August 2020, you'll see a little button saying solar pool heater data. And if you click that, I'll take you into a new window and show the PDF document. It may take a while to load because it is 67 megabytes, depends on your data rate. And also if you zoom in, it may be a little bit blurry, but this will clear. So as you can see, I've got a number of charts with easy to follow information. So I've separated it out into the first three days, which is the 29th to the 31st of July. And then the 6th to the 11th of August, as I wasn't here for the dates in between. So as you scroll further down, you can check out all the individual days as well. And then if you really wanted to, you could scroll down further and see all the data, but it is over 400 pages long. But this is the raw data taken over nine days at 15 second intervals. So instead of looking through this document on my web browser, I'll open it up in Excel just to have a look through the data. The main page that most people will be interested in is a summary page. So I've put all the relevant information into this area where for the first three days, the pool temperature increase was 4.6 degrees. So how much difference did the solar heaters actually make? So the pool increased by 10.8 degrees from the 6th to the 11th of August. So if that would have been without the dome, it would only have been 9.5 degrees. And if it was without the homemade panel, it would have been nine degrees. If it was just the environment heat in the pool, it would have been an increase of 7.8 degrees. So the solar element added three degrees to the pool. So without the solar heating, the pool would have been around 27.8 degrees. Although I much prefer nearly 31 degrees. So looking at a chart, you can see panel out, dome out, pool temperature, outside temperature, all in degrees C, and then whether the pump is either on or off. And then you've got the second graph, which is the momentary wattage of both the panel and dome heaters. So if you look at the chart from the 6th to the 11th of August, you can see where the pumps turn on and off. And then you've got the pool temperature trace, which is the light blue trace. And that starts at 20 degrees. Then the start of the next heating period on the next day is 20.8 degrees. Then 23.3 degrees. 23.4, not much of an increase there. Then 26 degrees, 27.8, and then 30.75, just before I took the memory stick out. You can see on day two, it was peaking around 800 watts, but averaging around 600 watts. Whereas the dome was peaking around 500, just under, and averaging 300. So I've taken a little 15 minute snippet from the 11th of August just to show a video of what it looked like outside, what the display looked like and what the graph looks like. Between 12.30 and 12.36 there was a fairly large cloud blocking the sun out so you can see the effect that it has on both the dome and the panel. 
So hopefully that will give you a good indication of whether to make one for yourself, purchase one already on the shelf, or just rely on the natural environmental heating. There you go, memory sticks back in and pumps are back on. That will just keep recording. So let's take the cover off. So this is just a bubble wrap that sits on top of the water and just allows the heat from the sun to sit on top of the water and heat the top of the water up. Although the water doesn't actually move around underneath it, apart from the pumps that are in there. Also, I've got the heat reflective foil installed all around the pool, so that actually reduces the amount of heat lost overnight. Although sitting outside for three or four months, it's actually starting to come apart a little bit. So it's okay for probably a year or so. So as you can see, the pool is absolutely crystal clear, and I haven't changed this water for over three months. So I'm just adding all the chemicals that you need to do, the chlorine, algaecide, clarifier, bits and pieces like that. Um, but what helps as well is this bubble wrap cover stops the sun from getting to the algae and helping it grow. So it has two functions. So I hope that helps you decide whether to make one or not. But for me, I'm going to get in the pool and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.